again on a topic that we started on creation out of order. We, but we went through the role of the man. We're going to start today on, on the role of the woman in creation. And, I, and this is something, again, I, I try to do very cautiously because I don't want anyone to think that we're belittling at all, man or woman. In the role of the creator, both are spatial, both are separate, but they're so spatial. And I say viva la, la, la difference. I'm really glad the woman's different from the man. I really am, okay? I'm really glad that they smell sweeter and they're cuddlier, Billy, aren't you? Amen. Amen. Very happy. I'm very happy about that. And they, they ain't got to shave every day like we do. Or whatever. They ain't got a beard. Or, yeah, you got to mean a pin bob on that, Bob. But, but anyway, I just thank the Father for his mercy and his creation and the beauty of creation that we take for granted every day. Dana, we do that every day. We take for granted every day. I look at there, Debbie beside you and what he's done for you through her, I'm sure, is a blessing to help me. I look at Marsha, even though she's not well, look into her eyes and the love and respect she sees. She respects me, and that means more to me than all the world, okay? And I really mean that. And I thank the Father that our home has been a Christian home. I didn't say perfect home, where just people in it, okay? But a Christian home that he is in charge of, as best we know how to let him be. And he's held together in his love and his, and his care for a long time, going on 30 years. All three of my sons are trying to serve the Father as best they know how. I didn't teach them a lot of things that I know now because I didn't know them then, okay? But they're growing in knowledge day by day. So everything we see good in our lives, remember where it comes from. Amen. Okay? Father of amen. The giver of every good and perfect all, gift Amen. Of and no, no shadow of turning. Hallelujah. Amen. That's a biblical teaching. And we're, we started with a man, and now we're going to start with a woman in creation. Now, the woman was created for a man for a purpose. <laughs> <laughs> Other than that, <laughs> uh, my brother, y'all want to listen to the tape and tape. My brother growling over there. Gonna watch him. But anyway, <clears throat> uh, I ain't gonna disagree with him. But other than that, okay, <laughs> the woman was created to complete man in creation, not to finish him off now, but to complete him. Okay, <laughs> as a as a help meet for the man because the father saw that everyone had every all creation had. Everything needed, but man was lonely. Man needed someone to be by his side. And he created a woman. He took a rib out of man, put it on the sleep, and took the rib and closed the flesh thereof again and created a woman. He called a woman called to come out of man. Okay? My aunt used to say that they called it woe unto man, but no, that isn't what it means. Woman, okay? But woman was created, again, for a purpose, to be a help meet and the, com the c completer of man in all the, his, of his needs and wants and desires in this world. And, and, and to, of course, bring forth children and do as Christ commanded to replenish the earth. Yes. Okay? And bring, and bring forth the, the fruit of the womb. And how many of y'all know where the first marriage was done at? In the Garden of Eden. Garden of Eden. Who joined man and woman together? Oh, hey, Amen. So uh, as a point of interest, at, at, wait a minute, the woman was created for a purpose, a divine purpose by the Father, for man's uh, help meet, man's uh, completer on this earth. And in the Garden of Eden, the first marriage was done. Marriage was ordained of the Creator. That's why I will not do a marriage to the state any longer. I will not go to Caesar and ask permission to marry two people. It's ordained by the one who made man and woman to come together in Christ under the Creator in the eyes of the Creator and witnesses those around who see it. So that's why I will not do a civil marriage any longer. I'm doing a marriage in May of this year with a couple that, uh, Joe jo Lester's daughter, do you remember them? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the old one. Uh, Chris is getting married. No, Mimi's already married. Chris is getting married. After the marriage, I, I, I'm not going to go into detail with them on that. They won't understand it. But I'm not, I'll not say at the end, by the authority invest me by the state of West Virginia. Because it wasn't invested by us. It's invested me by, the, by, by our Savior, okay? That's right. And I will, I will not sign license for them to be married by, under the state. Now, they know that, and that's what it's going to be, all right? So, so we are going to, uh, but he doesn't. No one, most people don't. The marriage was given by the Father to bring together man and woman. And this is important. We understand this, that a marriage is to be, until it quits feeling good, right? No, death do us part. And forever on this earth as far as ever can be, to death do us part. That's something so many people take so lightly. Am I right? Yeah. They'll say, I do, but I do to them, Dana means, until we get mad at each other. Until my wife throws a fit, then I'm out of here. Now, I have to admit, that even if I've been married at the time, probably felt like walking out more than once. 
But if you're a Christian and understand the scriptures, you know that's not the way it works. You, you work it through. You, you, you learn to respect one another through these sayings. You help one another. And you go through this as a, as a marriage. And a woman was created for man for a purpose. In the book of Genesis, back in chapter 3, I, I, we, we could go back to the chapter, Genesis chapter 1 and 2, and the woman was created for man. And you know what happened after the creation? We know that, that woman and man both sinned. But woman, woman sinned first, so therefore, according to the scripture, her desire was to be into her husband. Not as a dictator, not as a tyrant, not someone who beats on her and abuses her and the children. Any man who does that has lost his right to be the leader of the family. Did you all hear that? Yes. Just like a civil authority that comes in and kicks down your door and tries to kill your family, he has lost his right to do that. He has no right to be a leader. A man who is a tyrant in the home has lost his right to be the head of the home. The head of the home is Christ. As I already taught you, the man is under Christ. And as a man is under Christ, the woman is to submit to man to glorify Christ and to come together in bondage and unity as one. Amen. You understand that, okay? You're welcome. It's, it's a unity. And when a man and woman comes together, how many does, does Christ see? Well, once they come together, how many does he see then? One. one. Do you understand for a man to leave his wife is to, to, is to destroy his own body or vice versa? Do you understand the Christ, Spirit says you are one. You're one now. So to separate and do that is destroying something that Christ sanctified. Now before you have knowledge of it, it happens. But after you become a Christian, you should know better. There's forgiveness for ignorance, but not for willful dis disobedience. Unless you repent. Do you understand the difference? If you don't know better it happens, okay. But when you understand that the Christ created marriage to be one and forever together, that when you tear that asunder, you destroy his creation. It's not natural any longer. It's a one, it's a unity. It's a unity that, and, and praise the Father for that unity. I don't know how to explain to y'all, except to all y'all that married know this, but when you've come together under Christ in marriage, and without marriage, the, the bed is not pure, it's not, it's not sanctified. But when you come together, we come together at night, and I lay down beside my, my wife in bed at night, and she curls up my arms. That's the sweetest feeling in the world to me, in the natural world. It's the sweetest I can feel in the natural world. It, 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 it is so, so spatial that she's mine, and I'm hers in this world. It, it, it's a beautiful, beautiful feeling that only, you can only understand, describe it. Your, your spirit becomes one, not just, not just your flesh, but your spirit becomes one. It's a loving, giving relationship. That's what marriage is to be, right? As Christ is with the church, so was the wife to be with the husband and vice versa, okay? But it's in Genesis chapter 3. Look at, uh, look at verse 16 again. It's after the fall. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow in thy, in thy, in thy conception. In sorrow shalt thou bring forth children, and thy desire shall be unto thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. Now that was not a curse, folks, as a curse is known today as far as the ruling part. He, and I'm, I'll prove this a little, bit, a little bit later. A woman was created the weaker vessel. So man's rule was not to be, do it or else. It was to be, I'll protect you. Please submit to me. Is there a difference, Big Bill? Yes. A big difference, is there not? There's a difference over this. Okay, let's go, let's go to 1 Samuel. Again, Tim will read to teach something here that this pertains not only to women, but also to men. Very much so. A very familiar scripture that I want to read to bring forth to your mind again. First Samuel chapter 15. When Saul would not obey the rule of, 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 of uh, God, Yahweh God to destroy the people and the lands he went into, Samuel approached Saul and told him something that fits every person's life, male or female. If you're in rebellion, in rebellion against righteousness, you are practicing something called witchcraft. And a woman who will not submit to her husband in righteousness is a witch. That's pretty straightforward teaching, but that's what the Bible says. She's practicing witchcraft, okay? But a man who, will not, who rebels against Christ's authority is also practicing witchcraft. Okay? So let's not point fingers at women, all right? It goes all around the circle here. And children who don't, don't obey their parents are practicing witchcraft. Now let that sink in, because this, this is what it says in, in 1 Samuel chapter 15. Let's look at verse 23. This is Samuel right, talking to Saul. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Now let's dwell on that a minute. What is a witch? Diviner. 
and when and whose spirit is she following? Oh, Satan. Satan. Satan's spirit. And now, how uh, which is someone who is contrary completely to what the laws of the Creator purposed? She was to be stoned. She was to be stoned. And what does the word craft mean? A practice. A practice. Yeah. Work, working, yeah. working. Practice. Which practice? You understand that? It's a which work. Rituals, yeah, well, and even though they're not going through the cauldrons and, and all this other things, a woman or a man who's outside the will of the Father and disobeying His commandments are practicing a cult, a witchcraft. Isn't that good? Interesting. It's amazing what this book says, isn't it? And we, and we don't, see, so we read it a lot of times, we read it, but do we break it down to understand it, Okay. A uh, witchcraft. Now, if, if I was a craftsman, say I, I worked with wood, that's my craft, right? Right. So I'm practicing my craft. Well, this is a witch practicing her craft. Witchery. Witchery, exactly. <laughs> but witchcraft and stubbornness. Anyone here know anybody stubborn? Go ahead and raise your hand. I, I, I am. I know I am. And stubbornness is as iniquity and adultery. When you rebel against righteous authority from the Creator, or the husband, or the children to their parents, you're committing adultery. Now, Big Bill, why would that be called adultery? What's that? Why, why is it adultery? Well, if you, be, you have pride, okay, and you rebel because of pride. Exactly. And that's exactly what that Satan did. And you want to do what you want to do. Yeah. So you're your own idol, right? Right. Hey, I'm my own God. You aren't following the proper legally God-ordained... <laughs> The leader. That's right. It's above you. That's right. What's it, Dick? I'm my own boss. I'm my own boss. I'm my own God. Has man today in this nation as a whole, even over the civil authority, has man not become his own God? That's why we have Harry Potter. And that's exactly yeah. right. Yeah. Now let this sink in. How many, uh, this has been a mindset, even my generation, but this next generation is even worse, and it's gotten worse every year. I'll do what I want to do. It's my business. You ever heard that? Many times. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, I mean, if I want to, if I want to go out and get drunk and, and do drugs, that's my life, my business. What are you, what are you saying there? Who's your God? Your own answer to yourself. Exactly. There's a whole commercial with people walking around with a sign that says in capital letters, "I am." It's so blasphemous. I am. I'm serious. He's proclaiming it's blasphemy. I don't know right. what they're selling, but everyone, it's a, it's a mindset of the nation. It's, it started back in the '60s. I remember that the me generation. If it feels good, do it, you know, and I'm worth it. Now, folks, this is a serious teaching on this. And it started before then, I'm sure, but this is when it started coming to fruitation, all right? And Dana can remember those days, I'm sure. We're seeing the, the, the witchcraft of a whole nation, the witchery of a nation. When man is elevating himself to be above the laws of our creator in nature, now, when a sodomite is practicing sodomy or lesbian lesbianism, they are above the laws of nature, Right. Right. They are saying, what I want is right, therefore I am my own idol, I worship myself. Now let that sink into your heart a minute, folks. That's very dangerous. And the further, the further that you go down that road, the more perverted it becomes. Yeah. And after a while, the Father says, I'll cut you off. My spirit will not always strive with man. I'll cut you off, and therefore you can, there's no chance of repentance. You cross a certain line, folks, ain't no coming back. Perverts. Let's go to first first Corinthians chapter eleven. First Corinthians chapter eleven. While we're turning there, please yes. for the folks that are listening or watching, uh, there's there's still plenty of hope if Yes. For, even if they're living wrong, right? Oh my that's where forgiveness comes in. Hallelujah. Thank you, Billy. Now, I want to say this. If you're living wrong, if you know you're doing something wrong, this is a day of jubilee. Ask for forgiveness, be set Freedom. free from that. Now I want to make this statement too. People say, well, I don't want to change. Let me tell you something. When you come to Christ with all sincerity, your desires will change. Mm -hmm. right. You'll want to change, not because you have to, although that's, you will want to. Your heart will be changed. You understand what I'm saying? When you understand what Christ done for you on the cross of Calvary, you don't mind crucifying the flesh and trying to get rid of the bad habits. You strive towards that. Does that mean it's easy? Debbie, is it easy sometimes to get over the flesh? No. No. The flesh wants to rear its head up and say, I'm still God. But the Spirit says, get down, boy, and shut up. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to crucify you again today. So understand this, that when you're truly saved, the fleshly desires don't change. But the inner man changes and desires to overcome the flesh. It's a continual battle, isn't that, Bill? That's right. Daily. So none of us in here can say, oh, we've arrived. If you do, I want to talk to you about it because I think you're lying. 
Exactly. It's in the mind. That's right. Continuously. So don't think that you're giving anything up when you're saved. You're not. You're receiving liberty in Christ. Yes, Kelly. Wouldn't, wouldn't you actually say that for a believer, because we do want to walk more in the, the path of the Lord, that that flesh that you're talking about, walking in the flesh, the deceiver is going to attack us even more oh, of course. to do that because we don't want to do that within the body of Christ. When you were living... To please the, to please the other, the other the enemy. When you're living to please him and not and not not the Savior, he knows your weaknesses, and he'll 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 play on those even more after you're saved. Sometimes, he'll he'll say he'll make this lust spring up inside you. Man, I gotta have that. I gotta have one more weed. I gotta have one more drink. I gotta have one more woman. I gotta. It's it's there. It's in your flesh, but inside you there's a new new voice. Hallelujah. That says, through Christ you can overcome this. Through Christ you can do all things. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Amen. And it's a daily walk. You just think in your mind, say, Lord Jesus, through the blood of Christ, get this out of my mind. Now. Amen. Now. It's gone. And get on down the road. Get your mind occupied on the Father and off, the, off that desire. And you'll overcome it. It may take time and time and time again to that falls to the wayside. But every time you go through one elevation, there's another, there's another bridge across. You understand? But that's okay because it's the same one that brought you to the first one to bring you through the second one. Yeah. Amen. And brothers and sisters, don't kill each other because they made a mistake. Brothers and sisters, get a hold and say, come on, let me help you up. Amen. 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 It, yes. Mary Austin and I were married in 56. We had a good marriage, but in 1972, when we both became one in Christ, that's when the marriage was made in heaven, and it was better. The love increases a hundredfold, doesn't it? Right. There's that's no way to... Fell in love with you. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. Again, teaching with the ladies and the men. But I would have you to know that the head of every man is Christ. Now, that's talking about here to the body of Christ, the Christians. If you're not a Christian, I'm sorry to make you, I don't make you angry, but he's not your head. He cannot be to receive him as your head. And, and then when you receive him as your head, you want to follow him. He is a, it's Christ. And the head of the woman is the man. Do you see that? That is not a dictatorship here, folks. This is a love commitment. Bob, when you become born again and, 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 and into the family of Christ, you weren't perfect, but did you, did you not desire to do what was right? The desire is there, and then it's a process drawing on the Holy Spirit. Daily. It's a or daily, hourly, or it's a daily walk, is it not? Yeah. A daily walk. Frequently. It's, it's not a commitment out of you have to. It's all of a sudden you want to. Yes. Uh, Dana, when you married Debbie, and you've been married how, how long now? 19 years. 19 years. Have you stayed with her because of law said you had to or because you want to? I don't want to. Amen. Is there a difference there? These are the right answers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good. Uh, you're doing good so far, Dan. I ain't finished with it yet, though. <laughs> but, but the law says you're, you're supposed to, right? This law and the law of man says you're supposed to. You're supposed to be faithful. That's the law, right? But is that what kept you faithful? Or is it loving you for her? Love. Love is the fulfillment of what, Bob? Of all things. Of all things of the law. Yeah. So when you become a Christian, understand what Christ did for you. It's not a have to. It's a want to. You desire to stay with, 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 with him as you do your husband or your wife, okay? And the woman submits to man not because she has to. It's a love thing. She wants to because she honors her head, the husband, as he honors Christ. This is a beautiful chain of command, if you will, and a beautiful coming together of all of the body. Okay, yes, Bob. Uh, marriage without the free will of both partners is absolutely useless, just like relationship to Yahweh without free will. And if you couldn't turn away, it's useless. Amen. If you have the right to turn away and don't, then it's precious. Anything that's done by commandment is bondage. That's right. You understand that? Anything that's done out of free will and love is for liberty. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Hallelujah, that's good. Well, I like that. I will get excited and start get up preaching me. Let's go let's go to let's go to first Corinthians. Stay in first Corinthians go to verse chapter fourteen. Timely verse. There. <clears throat> Amen. Lord is, oh, the Father's so good to us. I get excited. I, re, I Sometimes, the folks, I don't mean to start preaching sitting down, but I can't help it. I get excited, and the Holy Ghost just gives me goosebumps all over, and I realize I'm His, and He paid for me, and I'm His. I'm His, bought and paid for. Ain't a power in hell can touch me unless He allows it to for His glory. Hallelujah. 
Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's right. Your betrothed die if you on the cross. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And, uh, and First Corinthians chapter fourteen, verse thirty-four. Now again, this is not a, this is not something that says that a woman cannot speak and allowed to testify in church. Verse thirty-four, First Corinthians uh, uh, chapter fourteen. Let your women keep in silence in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded to be under obedience, as uh, as also saith the law. Now, wait a minute. Paul goes another place and says that. And people say, well, that just had to do with the Corinthian church. No. Paul says it has to do also with the law. It's not a dishonor. The woman's allowed to, if Debbie wants, I want to sing a song, hallelujah. If Lynn wants to testify, hallelujah. But this doesn't mean to come in and take over the service and say, we're going to run it. The pastor said, I don't shut up. That's usurping authority, okay? But that's what I says. It's Bob. Okay. You, just what you're saying in verse 2 of the first chapter says it wasn't the Corinthian church. It says to the called out ones of Yahweh who are at Corinth, to those who are sanctified in the Messiah, called as saints, with all those in every place who call upon the name of Amen. our Savior. Amen. Comes them all. Comes yeah, them all. It wasn't. None of, this is not just addressed to the Corinth church. It's in verse thirty-five. If they, if they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home. Now, let me just make this as clear as possible. Who should a wife go to first for leadership? Husband. And, it, and if, if the husband maybe doesn't, have, doesn't know the answer exactly, maybe a spiritual matter or any kind of matter, why is the pastor there or someone there? To lead in God. To lead in God. But she goes to the husband. The husband, the husband that comes with the wife and to, for the answer together. I have counseled many people over the years, lots of couples. But the, the, the way it's done is, a, and, and sometimes if the, if the husband was not a Christian, the wife may come ask me a question. That's understandable. But if he's trying to do what's right in the Lord, go to him, and then you come together to me or anybody else that you feel you can and ask for help, folks. This is not telling a woman that she cannot ask for help in something, okay? This is very wrong. But a woman, uh, if a, a woman is to be in submission even in the church to her husband and the leader of the body, which is a pastor. But isn't the whole church supposed to be in submission to the pastor as far as teaching goes and authority of the pastor? If he's following, if he's following the Lord. He's not, what did Paul say? As right. long as I follow Christ, you follow me. Well, does that make Paul a dictator? No. no. It's, and and do, do pastors have to have authority? Of course. But he, he uses that in the love of Christ. So this is not a commandment says, don't even hang out the talk. God is the only person that can be a leader without being also a follower. Amen. Hey, absolutely right. Absolutely. First Timothy. First Timothy chapter two is right. First Timothy chapter two. Let's look at verse nine. Let's start at verse 8. I will therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands. Now, let me pause there one second. And Dana, would you tell me what it means when he said, why would he specify lift up holy hands? Well, that means that, uh, that the man is charged with sanctifying his life. There you go. With growing in, in the grace and, and the wisdom and knowledge of our Lord and Creator. And if we're not following Him, are our hands holy, so to speak, to lift they up to Him? Not holy. And will, will, he, will He hear our prayer if our hands are not holy to Him? The sin in our lives, He can't hear a prayer except repentance. You understand that? Do you remember I just taught, I did a whole teaching on how the Israelites had to, had to cleanse the temple and cleanse the priests, then go back into revival? Until, until you are living according to the Word, you cannot lift up holy hands to him. Amen. Okay? If we're mistreating our wives, he won't hear our prayers. He will anymore. not. No. He will not. It says, without wrath and doubting, in like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. That means covering the body. Okay? With shamefacedness and sobriety. What does it mean, shamefacedness? Serious. Yeah, shamefacedness. Uh, uh, I mean, yeah, it means... It means Modesty, or, or right. that, I, what we're looking for, I can't. Somebody help me. Shame, shame faces means that someone who respects her body and, and, and a man too covers a body because it embarrasses her not to. How I many I know that some days today you walk out in the community space in time, some people have no shame for nudity? How I many I've noticed that? Dress yeah. doesn't bother, how the dress doesn't bother at all, or lack thereof, I should say. They have no shame faceness. 
Am I right? Yeah. They walk around with the belly button hanging out with the ring in it nowadays. Am I telling the truth? Come on now, this is serious, okay? Yeah. Why do you think in, in, the, in, the, in the Old Testament laws, he commanded men and women to be clothed differently and clothed wholly? I mean, it's cover the whole body to cover your nakedness. He knew when they started going the other direction, what would happen? What happens today? You walk down the streets in Elkins or Somerville. Lust. Lust. Why, why is that? Why, would, why, would, why does Satan want a woman or a man to walk down the street over half naked? What's the purpose of that? What, what, what does it do to the man who sees a woman, and who is, a man who's not saved and sanctified, trying to walk holy? What does that do to his mind? Lust. 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 And what do the women's also? Do you understand that this is trickery, folks? It's, it's called witchcraft. It's an attack on the kingdom of God. There you go, it's witchcraft. But don't you think that man or that woman that's dressed like it has that in mind? Well, of course. You don't yes. put a for sale sign on your car unless it is. That's right, exactly right. So anyway, dress modest pearl and shamefaced in sobriety, not with broided hair or gold or pearls or cost That means they're not going to try to show off. There's nothing wrong with wearing a, a earring or a ring or a piece of jewelry. That means they're not trying to show them, look who I am, look how power, look at the money I got. That is, that is not humility, folks. That's bragging. But which becometh women professing godliness with good works. Now let them pause that a second. I just said to you that witchcraft is which works. A witchcraft is her, is her trade. Now a godly woman has her craft is what? Good works. It, now, let that sink in. Isn't that beautiful how the Bible fit together? Now this is written, this is written some thousands of years apart from Samuel to Timothy. About 3,000 years apart. But look at how they fit together here. Okay? Let the woman learn the silence that I did read that same with, with all subjection. But I, that's, I just read to you back another other chapter. But I want you to see the tie in here. And how beautiful this is. And how this was meant to glorify Christ and beautify the people that followed him. Let's go back to Ephesians. What? Yes. Let's go on to 13 and 14. We'll comp go ahead. Verse 14. And it says, it gives you the reason that that was about the woman being in subjection. And Adam, it says the woman was first in Eve, but Adam was not deceived. The woman was deceived. The two vessels that complement each other. Woman's emotional, man is very pragmatic and factual. Woman was deceived on emotion. Well, you will become as God. Right. Adam knew that was an absolute lie. God told me not to. But he chose at that point to disregard God's commandment and follow his wife. That, that's true. But uh, this is why the teaching of a woman <clears throat> you know, is a, more because of her emotions. He's we deceived where man is very pragmatic. And thank goodness I'd hate to live in a totally pragmatic world without all, emotions, though. All logical will be, it'll be, it'll be boring. It, it. Let's look at verse 22. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. Now, this is going out on TV and other places. Why feel that he say, submit yourselves unto your own husbands? Why, would that was, why was that specified? <clears throat> why, why can't lend yourself to me? <laughs> because of the, that's the order that God created. That's chain of command. Chain of command. command, right? It had, do, do, now let me make this point while I'm here. I have no authority in this home except what Phil allows me to have. Right. Why is that? This is Phil's domain. This is his home. All right? Now if I come in here as a Christian brother and try to, and I, we do this together, we fellowship together, I'm as welcome as I can be. If I come here trying to boss Lynn and, Lynn and children around, Phil's going to call me aside and say, no, Brother Butch, I love you, but you're out of order here. And no matter how many times they say, well, Phil, I'm a married man. I have children. Well, that's fine. Go to your house. Take care of that. Amen. In my home, it's my home. Amen. Now, Dana, is, is, it, is, is that the way it's supposed to be? That's how it's supposed to be. So when I walk into Dana's house, I walk in with respect. This is Dana's home. You know, y'all, the old men wear hats. You, walk, you wear the custom coming from the man who takes his hat off in somebody's house. Respect. You're another man's covering. Mm -hmm. Do you understand what I'm trying to say to you? You're, I'm under his domain at that time. I'm under his covering protection while walking in his home. So when you walk into a man's, a man wears a hat, that's fine, wear a hat. When you walk into somebody's house, you take it off to show respect. Yeah. You understand that? It's important, folks. I mean, that's, that's always forgotten. Today you watch young people today and wear hats backwards, front, front, sideways, no matter where they go. There's no respect to talk to anymore. I never did wear a hat that much, but when I did, my dad said, when you go into somebody's house, you take your hat off. He didn't really tell me why, but he said, you do it. I did because he said so. I don't know if he understood why he said at the time. But it's to show. The wives submit unto your own husbands 
as unto the Lord. Notice that, as unto the Lord. She doesn't submit to me because she's afraid I'm going to beat her. Right. Understand that. That's a whole different thing. Kevin, if, Kevin, if, if I'm that kind of man, I don't deserve to be head of the house. And if, if Phil come to my house and caught me beating my wife, he'd have every right to intercede on her part. Yes, he would. She's his sister. That's exactly right. Now, that's, a, that's scriptural. And yet, how much more do we forget that every time they murder somebody down in Charleston and they call a baby? But anyway, it's going to something else here. Uh, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is head of the church, and that he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, now we discussed last week the Savior of the body. The husband is to protect, protect, lead, and provide for the body of the woman. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be, unto their, be to their own husbands in everything. Now, in everything, does that mean if I tell Marsha to go out and rob Kroger's tomorrow, I need some money? No. No. Righteous leadership in everything. If you said that, you came out from under the authority of your head. That's right. I lost my authority then. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify it and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but it should be holy and without blemish. When the bride was betrothed to the, to the bridegroom in the Old Testament, and also today's time too, we forgot it though. The, what, 27 here. Uh, she's the 501 churches out of the uh, that's right. Follow C three churches under the under the control of the state, not under the Father, not in Christ. You understand? But anyway, uh, when, the, when the when the when the bridegroom was betrothed to the husband, they weren't they weren't married. They were betrothed, and she committed a whoredom. What happened to the bride? To the bride? To the to the, to the one? She was killed. Marriage was off. It was off. <laughs> Done. <laughs> now, to, to, to make a point here, when 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 uh, Mary was betrothed to Joseph, and he heard that she was pregnant. What was his thought? He wasn't going to kill her. What was he going to do? He's going to divorce her. He was quietly. compassionate. He was compassionate. He's going to put her away quietly. Okay. So what this saying here is that the that the, the that the, that the church is to be into the husband without well, spot and wrinkle or blemish shows to the wife being to her husband. Purity. Okay. That is something that we need to keep in mind. Not just the night we're married, but every day after that. No, those come along with it, whether well, they were or not. Sought men to love their husbands, uh, love their wives as their own. Uh, men love their husbands, yeah. Sought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loved his wife, loved himself. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherisheth, even as he, the Lord, the church. For we are members of his body, of, of his flesh, and of, the, of, the, of his bones. For this cause shall man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, and they shall be. Should be one flesh. Now, those that they too should be one flesh. In the eyes of the Father, you become one. To rip that apart is not natural. If I walk over and we hook Nick to two different four, four wheel drive vehicles and yank him in two, what would happen? It would be two of them in terrible. Well, it'd <laughs> hurt too, <laughs> would it? It'd be messy. But you kill them. You cannot. And it's unnatural to do that. Yeah. All right? This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning the Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let every man, one of you in, in particular, so love his wife, even as himself, and let the wife see that she, and notice this word, it's a very important word, reverence her husband. Now you'll find that a man is not, not to be called reverend, it's a, it's a name of God. Okay? So why would he use that word here, reverence her husband? What do you think, Debbie? We're supposed to honor our husbands with our head, just as we honor Christ. Christ, amen. And I think that word means more respect than it does uh, the, uh, the same word we think for the yeah, well, yeah, it does. Yeah. Although Sarah called Abraham Lord, the small L. Yes, yeah. Okay, it's a, it's, it's, it's a reverence, not like we reverence our Father in heaven, but it's a holy commitment unto the husband. Okay? He's supposed to be in the line of authority from the Father, passing the Father's authority on to the wife. There you go. Yeah, that's right. Titus, chapter 1. This gets a lot of people shook up and go teach them about Titus and what the Qualifications are here for ladies and, and men, but ladies here. Titus chapter Titus is a very small book, but I tell you what, if you get a chance to study that book, <laughs> you got a lot of stuff in there that's really, really deep teaching. Titus chapter uh, uh, two, I said one, chapter two, verse one. But speak thou the things which become sound doctrine. Let the aged men be sober, grave, temperate, and sound in faith, in charity, and patience. The aged women likewise, that they be in behavior as becoming holiness. 
not false accusers. Now, what, what does it mean, false accusers? What, what does it mean? What was another word for false accusers today? Slanderers. Slanderers, gossipers. Gossip. Okay? Not giving them much wine. Teachers of good things. Now, listen to this. That they may teach the young women to be sober. Does that, that mean they don't get drunk? Well, that means that. No, that is not serious. serious. That, listen, this very important part. The women are to teach the young women how to love their husbands. Now, wait a minute. I thought that we got married, you loved each other. What's this mean? Uh, what's this mean, uh, the Kelly, that we, you're to teach young women to love their husbands? What's that saying? Well, you know, when you're young and you're first married, you, you may be in love with your husband, but you may not be how to reverence him in the right to, way. To your husband. It grows. It grows. But, the, but before, is it important before someone gets married that someone teach the young girls and men about marriage? Yes. yes. Yeah. What, what's happened today that marriages, uh, there's more divorces in our marriage today per, per I mean, ratio. I mean, they get married and divorced quickly, more often than they do get married and stay together. Why is that, why is that so today? They aren't they prepared. Aren't they aren't being taught. No one's teaching them. But even in the church today, when you go to most, most churches, do the old women, old women take back the young women and teach them anything about marriage? No. Not, they, do they? Now, come on. Y'all been in church somewhere. How many times did the preacher's wife or the older lady say, come on, let's go back to your young lady. I'm going to teach you how to dress. I'm going to show you how to act like a lady. I'm going to tell you how, you know, how to love your husband when you get married. How many has ever happened anywhere y'all been? Even primitive African tribes do that and prepare yes. their, pe their young people for marriage that way. But you see, it says to love their husbands. But notice the next part. Look at this. To love their children. Shane, you're new here, but how can, a, how can a mother murder her baby? I mean, they do it every day. I mean, how can they do that? I don't have any idea. That's just crazy. Unbelievable, isn't it? But you see, they have to be taught even how to love their own children. Dana, what's that mean to you? Natural love fails, does it not? People were up to, today have, uh, have been taught so many things either by example or lack of example or wrong yeah. uh, perceptions uh, imposed upon them by the media or by the uh, entertainment industry. Yes. They have perverted the right way to a point today that uh, uh, most people uh, today have trouble knowing what is right Even and what in the is church. wrong. They're, they're so confused, confused. that uh, they can't distinguish between the right and the wrong because mainly they are not rooted and grounded in the Word of God. And who, who was to be the one, Dana, who saw that society was influenced with the Word? Who was to be the one to make sure the society the understood? The parents, the, the, head home. Of the home. They had the home. What's happened? The home's been destroyed. Now, now, go ahead. Young people do not look at their parents as being wise. They don't see them. No, they don't. Well, they're not taught that anywhere. No. The world today teaches that you, your parents are old fogies. They're, they're out of date. We're having the father knows best. Hey, exactly. Or, yeah, that's a fact. Y'all remember, remember the old show? The father knows yeah, best. Andy yeah. Griffith show, you know, become the daddy for everybody. So, those things have changed in the last 30, 40 years, have they not? But look at verse Look at verse 5. To be discreet. What's the word discreet mean? Chaste. Chaste. That yeah, means chaste. Same thing. Uh, the screen, chaste. Keepers at home. Now, folks, don't get angry about this when I say this. But wives working outside the home are, are, are a work, is a work of Satan. It has been for years. Part of the breakup of the family. Absolutely. Right? Start, back, start back to World War II big time. But now, I'm not saying that there, it's, if a woman's single and has no children or whatever, you know, that's necessary, uh, that's okay. But if, if you have children, no husband is to provide for the family so the wife can be at home and be a keeper at home. That doesn't mean she's, she's locked up in the house all the time, can't go out. That ain't what I'm talking about. I'm talking about someone that keeps the home. What does the word keep mean? Cares for. Cares for, a tender of, someone who protects even, a keeper. Yes. How about a keeper of the gate, too? It they, also implies yes. guard yes, the that's home. Yes, that's what I'm saying, yes. A, a protector of the home. A woman has got a chosen part in this. My goodness, how beautiful for young people get to come home. And I remember just growing up, come home and smell supper cooking after school. I mean, I could smell brown beans cooking in the pot before I ever got in the house, you know, hot rolls in the oven. Oh, my, I, my mouth started watering before I got through the door. Walked through the door, and my mom was there, you know. And, oh, yes, you couldn't. This, those things are lost today. It made you want to come home. There you go. And you're right. It's not just the kids that like that. No, no, it's the husbands too. Amen. You're right. Amen. You know, this, this is the way male's supposed to be, right? Now, listen, folks, because we messed up, okay? Well, so our wives work. We didn't know better. We didn't know better. 
But it's not, it's not too late to start changing our lives, okay? We, we can tone down our livelihood a little bit, start doing without a few things to get our home back in order. It never happen because you won't do without them. No, they won't just spoiled that way. You'll go to our portion of the Lord, they're going to still be both like bread and roll. Amen. I ain't had them every Amen. Ain't nothing like good old hot biscuits and brown beans and a mess of fried taters. Oh, let's get on something else anyway. <laughs> to be discreet, chest, keep it at home. Good. Now listen, here you go again. Good, obedient to their own husbands. There it is again. That the word of God be not blasphemed. Hmm. Someone tell me, Karen, why do you think that a wife who is a good mother and a good uh, uh, wife, wh 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 what's it mean, the word not blaspheme when she does these things? What's it mean? How does she blaspheme the word but not being, but not being right? What's she practicing if she's not doing right? Witchcraft. What greater blasphemy than to practice witchcraft? It all ties together here, Debbie. It really does. Yes, Bob. The Southern Baptist Church is being basically tore apart right now because they are just teach. They have come to the knowledge and are teaching once again that this order that you are teaching here. Yes. And I don't think, praise the Lord, that this congregation is going to be tore apart because you're teaching it. I don't think so. This going to draw together. Let's go to Colossians. About our time already. Boy, this hour goes by so quickly. Are y'all enjoying this too? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, the tape, the tape duplicator won't make that hour and a half tape. I didn't find a tape duplicator. Colossians chapter 3. And this again is just another confirmation we just read. Colossians 3, verse 18. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands over and over and over again, as you said, as is it fit in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and be not bitter against them. And we'll get back to the children in a minute. But I want you to see, I, I do this in many scriptures. I don't want you to pick up one scripture and say, well, here it is, Kevin. I can show you all through the Bible where this is commanded by the Father to do these things. Wives, love your husbands and submit to them. And husbands, love your wives as Christ of the church. This is something that's told over and over and over again. Now, why do you think, Nick, that this was necessary to repeat this five or six times? Sonny, it makes it perfectly clear. Some of them are so hard-headed. Ah. Mm -hmm. oh. Yep. Mm -hmm. amazing. Amazing well, it, it, it wasn't me and you, was it? No, I know that. We're Paul's. It wasn't us. <laughs> it, it, yes, Kelly. Okay. As woman, I have to say this here. You're telling us that over and over again, we're just telling us as wives to submit ourselves to our husband. The second operative word here is right here, too, that is yes. repeated over and over and over. Husbands, love your wives. Yes, it is fit unto yes. the Lord. I read the next verse. Husbands, Love your wife. That's repeated over also, yes. Yes, that's over and over too repeated. This is important, folks. This is not a give me, give me all one way thing. Yeah. This, is a, this is a union. When you become a born again Christian and the Lord fills you with his Holy Spirit, you become a, in union with, with Christ. You understand that? Yeah. Then what's that make you? Does that make you special in the eyes of the world? No. no it doesn't. What's it make you in the eyes of, of a father? Makes me special. Where it counts. Amen. The next verse addresses children. There, yeah. right in those three verses, is the chain of command. We'll, we'll get that, we'll get that next time on children. Yeah. Let's go to First Peter. I want to try to finish up two more scriptures if we can. First Peter. The same thing again, but I keep reading it over and over again, so no one can say that Pastor Bush takes one verse and makes a whole doctrine out of it, okay? I mean, that, that, how many know that, know that happens sometimes? Oh, yeah. Very well. Out First Peter, mind. chapter 3. Verse 1, likewise, you wives, be in subjections to your own husbands. Boys, get my not this hand of feel. But anyway, that if any obey, now this is important, that if any obey not the word of the uh, 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 word, they also may be without the word, be won by the conversation of the wives. Someone who has got a husband who's not a Christian, but the wife is, and she is chaste before him and honors him, will that influence his life? Yes. Yes. I have seen this happen. I know one lady, you probably know too, uh, I know you do, I'm um, trying to think of her. Dick knows her. I came rode for us all the time with this. Good gosh. I uh, rode for us. Uh, live up in Braxton County. Come on, help me with the name. I'm thinking about oh, Bernard. Bernard. Bernard and oh, Henrietta. Yeah. Okay. Henrietta prayed for Bernard for 40 some years yeah. before he was saved. But he was a, she was a chaste wife, a good wife to him. And she influenced his life to be saved. And he brought into the kingdom of Christ. Now that's important. Women, you, you don't know what that means. Well, he's a bad dude. Oh, he, he was mean. And when he came in, he came in strong. Though. Yes, he did. Really? Next to his wife. So the wives, oh, the, the wives 
Conversation means lifestyle before their husband Amen. is not only can lead them to the Lord, but also those who are already Christians. Dane is a Christian. I'm a Christian. We're trying to live it right. The wives can influence your husband to do better. Yes. When Marsha looks at me with those big brown eyes and says, I have complete trust in you, whatever you decide, you, you guess what, Bill? I've tried to do what's right. Yeah, it's like cheerleader action. Exactly. Amen. <laughs> I like you. Mm, mm. Anyway. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, yeah, complete trust. Wives can temper their husbands, too. That's a good point. Marsha has tempered me very much over the years. And seeing how, when the first were just me and her and four men at home, we had her. Now that there's my two of my sons are married, got a daughter and a, two you know, daughter in laws and a, a grandbaby, a little girl. Believe me, we're getting that number now. But so it's tempered me more. Okay, women are needed to keep men from being over logical as far as <laughs> reacting in a, in a different way than what they should. Temperance is there. That's a good word, Debbie. Thank you. Marsha can work on you more harder now. Exactly. <laughs> but see, that that's the completing a man, not finishing him off. Like I said, it's completing yeah. man. Okay. <laughs> She'd like that. <laughs> that, that. That's a completing, that's a woman's place to bring in the completion of, of what, what the Creator meant for us to be in a home. That's Mar why two become one. That's exactly. That's, it does. And when Marsh comes to me, she didn't come to me and, and, and demand that I do something. If she did, probably, you know what I'd probably do? I'd probably buck up like a mule and say, hang on, to happen. But she comes to me and says, honey, let me bring it, run this by you. And she does. And she's good at this, okay? Most times, well, not all, not, a lot of times I've been wrong. I have to say, you, you know, you're right on that. But to demand is one thing. I'm, we, before we go before our, cre our father and say, I demand you heal me. It doesn't work that way, does it? You go in humility to ask him, like, humility to ask him for, for, for her to, to be touched, or you be touched. So she comes to me, she comes to me humbly, not, not like a little child, not like a little puppy. Comes to me, though, with respect for me and says, what do you think about this? And a lot of times she's right and I'm wrong. I hate to say it, Dana, but I, I'm, that's true. Yes, Bob. Uh, women are more emotional because when the situation presents itself, they consider it and with one half of their brain and then communicate and consider with the other half, which is the emotional side. And this pathway is very limited in men physically to trace yes, this out. Sure. So basically men are half-wits that only think with half their brain. Well, say you had to say in front of Debbie, didn't you? Yeah, I just had anyway. Well, I've known it for a long time. I'm an LG <laughs> specialist. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Well, we'll let's get on something else here now, very quickly. But anyway, in verse two, this again talking to wives, while they behold your chaste conversation or your or your, or your pure lifestyle, coupled with fear. That that that. that wait, just stop me. I mean, reverence of the husband, respect, respect to the husband. Okay. Yes. All right. Whose adorning, let it be not with outward adorning of plaiting of the hair and a wearing of gold or putting on apparel. In other words, you don't go off and act like you're worldly, show off type, as we all want to do sometimes in the flesh, right? Like uh, Paul Crouch's wife. Exactly. Oh, my. Oh, there's an article this week, by the way, about, about, about TBN and this newsletter. But let it be in the hidden man of the heart. Now, this talking talk to women, but it said, let it be in the hidden man of the heart. Let it be of the spirit of the heart that's been made true through the blood of Christ. Let it be that the hidden man of the heart in that which is not corruption, corruptible. Is it true that the Holy Spirit inside you is not corruptible? Absolutely. And when your spirit's been born again of the, of, of the blood of Christ and by His Spirit, your spirit should be uncorruptible. Led by, led by the Word, okay? Even the, or, the, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit. Does meekness mean weakness? No. No way. Submission to the Submission father. to the right to authority and also strength and restraints, what that means. Yes. Meekness and quiet spirit, which, is a, which in the sight of God is of great price. That's Amen. who she pleases, okay? For after this manner in the old times, the holy women also who trusted in God adorned themselves being in subjection unto their own husbands. So this is not a new commandment, is it? No. Nope. Even Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord. That wasn't a disrespect to the true Lord, no. okay? Whose daughters ye are, listen to this, as long as you do well and are not afraid with any amazement. So when you obey what's right, this is something that's given to, to us as, as wives to show respect to their husbands as Sarah did her husband Abraham. Dang, that's beautiful, isn't it? It really is. Now I'm going to go ahead and read verse 7. I read it last yeah. week. Okay. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife. What does is, what is Psalms, we'll read Psalms 31, or Proverbs 31 sometime next week too. Proverbs 31, the wife can be called blessed, and the children raise up and call her blessed. 
Why? Because of what she is. I miss my mom today like just like I, I miss her. I'm 52 years old and I still miss my mommy. A woman who fears Yahweh, she shall be praised. Amen. I miss my mom because my mom was a strong woman, but she was a good wife and a good, good mommy. Now that's a fact. Am I right, Dick? I miss mine. <laughs> now giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel and as being heirs together of the grace of life that your prayers be not hindered. So the unity there is that we are to love our wives as ourselves, Kevin, and to honor them as a weaker vessel. And if we don't, our prayers are hindered. Big Bill, that's a, that's a pretty serious statement, isn't it? <laughs> Let's go to Proverbs chapter 12. I'm just about out of just about through for today. Proverbs 12. I went to church for, I had no idea how many years before I started preaching. And I went to church for a long time as a preacher in a lot of different places. And I never heard this taught anywhere. Now what does that show us in society today? If even the, souls, the ones who call themselves the body of Christ don't teach us, Jack, what chance the world got? They're not teaching nothing. They don't have the whole council. That's why I'm here, the whole council. They're not teaching in the church. Amen. Amen. That's, out of order. That's, why, that's right. That's why it's out of order. Chapter 12, Proverbs, verse 4. A virtuous woman is, is a crown to her husband. Oh, I wish I had time to go into that. That, that. that doesn't mean that she crowns him. I mean, she's, <laughs> she's a crown to her husband. But she that maketh ashamed is a, a rottenness to his bones. Let that sink him in, Okay. I can take my wife anywhere and not be ashamed of her. Amen. Not of what she's going to say, the way she dresses, the way she acts. She's a lady wherever she is. And she, but a, a woman who is rebellious is a witch, is a rottenness to her husband. I mean, what does the Bible say? It's better to live with her than with a, a contentious woman. In the desert or on a rooftop, yeah. yeah. In a barn, anywhere. Any place else. You know, dog house, anywhere. Move over there. I'll come here. But it says that uh, this is what, uh, can you understand the, what, what's it mean when something's rotten inside? What's it doing? Cancer. It's dying. Dying. Well, you, you know the women listen to this minute. You want know the power you have over your husband to make or break him? Oh, a woman can ruin a man. Absolutely. Let that sink in, ladies. See, this is by no means putting you down. You have in your power, Lynn, to make or break feel as a man. And I'm going to say this for the women, and, and I, I, you already know this, but a man's ego is fragile. Not from the world, nor even other women, but a wife can tear a man down just like that and destroy his ego. And I don't mean ego in a bad way. I mean make him feel like, like he's not a man anymore. You understand that? A wife who is in, living in witchcraft is destroying the man and brings him to shame. Not only of the world, in the eyes of the world, but of his own self. And a man without his wife is only half a man. Half a man. Yeah. Now let that sink in, ladies. That's a very powerful statement. You are the ones, as our help me to prop us up sometimes, help us go on, Big Bill. The bitter times I would give up a long time ago, and I'm going to show you all something I wasn't going to do, but I will show you this. Right here is a bullet just going to come in my belly when I got shot. I just found it the other day in the commode. <laughs> I'm serious. Wow. Well, the commode stopped up, and wife Marsha swept it out, and this is a 9 millimeter slug that put me in the, in, in the bed for a long time. When I was laying there suffering, I mean, I was hurting, folks. I'm going to tell you, not millimeter shot from two foot away can put a, can put a hurting on you. But there's a the proof right there that it happened. I'm going to keep that. But uh, there was a time I was going to give up. I didn't care live to die. I was tired, tired of fighting. Marsha, I can never fit this. She got down my face in the bed in Charleston. She went, you're going to start breathing this machine. She didn't hit me hard. But you're going to start breathing the machine. I've fought now long enough. There. You're going to fight a while. And she stuck up my eye and said, you breathe. You know, because I'm catching pneumonia, whatever, you know, I wasn't breathing right. Yeah. That's the wife. See what she did? She gave me strength when I wanted to quit. Wow. That was my wife did that. And I say this to the glory of the Father. If it hadn't been for her, I wouldn't be here today. Some of y'all may say, doggone it. But anyway, <laughs> no, but with all seriousness. <laughs> my, my brother's done that too with me when I was in the... Uh, deep throes of depression. Absolutely. Billy, without them, we couldn't make it. Yeah. I mean, that's why they're here to help us. So when, when you look at Marsha, you could, if there's any good in me you see, and anything that I've done good, it's Christ, of course, but she, she's the reason why I didn't give up the fight. 
Well, I laid there, and I, I lost weight, I lost 60-some pounds of weight and couldn't even eat up there too for a while. I didn't care. I was ready to go home. I didn't care. And because you were in that condition, she was in the position of authority and could say that to you. Yeah, and that's right. And she, she right. took care of the meals everything at times. She took Amen. care of everything. She was the head of the house at that yeah. time. I could not do it. And she knew how to do it what, and honor me at the same time. That's training. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I tell you what now. There, there ain't nothing worth a she. Uh, same chapter. I beg you. I'm, Jerry, this is so beautiful. I, we got to get through this. Let's see. What chapter we'll go to next? Let's go to chapter 18. Of Proverbs. Yes. Yep. Hallelujah. Ladies, you see the power you have over your men? And I'm serious. I'm serious. I mean, the old saying that behind every great man is a good woman, that is not just a, uh, that's really about always true. And behind every rotten man. There's, yeah, there's a man. <laughs> With few exceptions. <laughs> yeah. But, 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 but look, at, look at verse 22. Whoso findeth a wife findeth a good thing. Amen. And obtain the favor of the Lord. Wow. Folks, this is a blessing. That's beyond what I can ever say. I wish Mark had been here today. She didn't feel, I wish she could have been here today. I'd like to honor her in front, of all, in front of you all. She has really put up with a lot with me. I am hard-headed, and I'm going to admit it. I'm stubborn. And when I know I'm right on something, I will not bend. And I know she'll expect me to bend and compromise on issues that are the principles. But I have been stubborn sometimes when I wasn't necessarily stubborn. And I, yeah, 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 I hate to admit that, but it's true. Yes. In verse 21, uh, sure has something to do with today's lesson for both men and women. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Amen. Amen. Let's go to chapter 31, the last chapter. I'm going to try to wrap this up on this. I ain't going to read the whole chapter. It's part of it. Chapter 31 will be the last scripture today. Say my thing about this. It's all right. Exciting, ain't it? Yeah. Chapter 31. We'll look, look about three or four verses there. Let's look at verse 10. Yep. Who can find a virtuous woman for her price is far above rubies? Amen. I remember I, t I told my, one of my sons, they said, the son, Patrick isn't married yet. And he can I said, tell you something about that too? Yes. It has now been determined that rubies, sapphires, emeralds are even more valuable than diamonds because they're much rarer than diamonds. Well, how about that? Scripture did something we didn't know back then. Uh, Patrick said, uh, was joking. I said, son, the only thing that costs you when you get married is everything you make. But anyway, <laughs> but anyway the, value, <laughs> the value is far as priceless. A good wife is priceless, okay? Mm -hmm. The heart of her husband does safely trust in her so that he shall have no need of spoil. In other words, she doesn't go out and spend, spend out everything he makes. She is very frugal in the household, takes care of the needs of the family, is very wise in handling the things at home. So she will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. That's a long, that's the whole day of life. That's, I mean, that's a wrap up of good wife. Let's go down to verse 27. I want to hear you through this. She looketh well to the ways of her household and eateth not the bread of idols. She ain't laying in bed all day watching soap operas, okay? She's not doing what's right. She tries to take care of her home. She's a keeper at home, take care of the house. Her children arise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. Favor is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Amen. Give her the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. My goodness. That is beautiful. We read from this every Sabbath evening at worship where we welcome in the Sabbath Amen. as a praise to the wife. Amen. I said, now look, look at Bill. There's Mary Alice beside him. I know Bill would say this scripture fits his wife perfectly. All right. And I can say about my wife, Marsha. I know Danny Ken Debbie, and I know I rest of this, and that's the way it ought to be. Hallelujah. That is a wonderful saying. And I pray someday that, that Dick's wife, Diane, will be with us in these Bible studies so he can Amen. be complete in this. It's, this book is so beautiful, Jack. It's written to us in such a beautiful way that there's no way that we should feel depressed. Even though all hell sell us, we know where we stand in Christ. We know we're in a battle. We know that someday we may pay a terrible price in the flesh for what we believe. But the battle's ours. And when you have a home that's complete in Christ, you are the, one of the richest men in the world. Amen. Money's okay when it comes to buying things, for, but money can't buy this. Money can't buy the peace of Christ. Money can't buy a good woman. Money can't buy a good husband. Money cannot buy a good home. Peace in Christ and peace of the wife is peace of mind. Amen. Any comments before we close? Bell I take.
holy cloud of witnesses surrounds us as we walk. Saints and martyrs through the ages who have marched this way before. And they cry, oh church, take courage, it's your time to take a stand, time to march with hearts courageous through the land. We're marching on.